Lately, the sun has been exceptionally active, and it is on the verge of undergoing a significant and intriguing transformation, a reversal of its magnetic field. This event happens approximately every 11 years, marking the halfway point of the solar cycle, and it carries considerable consequences for life on Earth. Over time, this magnetic field becomes more complex and entangled due to the sun's rotation and convective motions. Eventually, this process results in a complete reversal of the magnetic poles, the North Pole becomes the South, and vice versa. In fact, it's possible that in the near future, the Sun could trigger a major risk that could lead to widespread chaos and calamity for everyone on the planet. Let's dive into this fascinating process and break it down. The Sun's magnetic field is driven by the motion of electrically charged gases in its core, a phenomenon known as the solar dynamo. Let's take a closer look at how this works. The Sun is mainly composed of hydrogen and helium in the form of plasma, a state of matter where electrons are free, creating a mix of ions and free electrons. The Sun's interior consists of several layers, with the core at its center, surrounded by the radiative and convective zones. The core is where nuclear fusion takes place, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing massive amounts of energy. Above the core is the radiative zone, where energy is transferred outward through radiation. Finally, the convective zone lies at the outer edge, where energy is moved through convection, with hot plasma rising and cooler plasma sinking, creating convection currents. The solar dynamo mechanism operates primarily within the convective zone and the tachyc line, a thin layer between the radiative and convective zones. This area is crucial because it plays a major role in generating the Sun-S magnetic field through the Sun-S differential rotation and shear flows. Instead, different parts of the Sun rotate at different speeds, with the equator rotating faster than the poles, a process known as differential rotation. This causes the Sun's magnetic field lines to stretch and twist, intensifying the magnetic field. Here's an interesting tidbit. The Sun doesn't rotate as a solid object. The solar cycle lasts about 11 years, during which the Sun's magnetic field undergoes several changes, culminating in a polarity reversal. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and occurs in distinct stages. At the beginning of the cycle, the Sun is in a solar minimum, characterized by fewer sunspots and low solar activity. The magnetic field is simple with a clear north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle progresses, the number of sunspots increases, signaling more magnetic activity. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic energy, and they appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarities. Over time, these sunspots migrate toward the equator. At the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a period of heightened activity with the most sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections CMS. The magnetic field becomes highly entangled due to the twisting and shearing caused by differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum wanes, the magnetic field begins to untangle and reorganize itself, gradually reversing its polarity. The North Pole becomes the South, and vice versa. Currently, we're in the solar maximum phase, and the Sun's magnetic field is set to flip. During this stage, we can expect some extraordinary solar activity that could be as deadly as it is fascinating. They monitor the sun's activity with advanced tools and techniques. Observatories, both on Earth and in space, use powerful telescopes to capture detailed images of the sun's surface and sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory track changes in the sun's magnetic, however, the reversal isn't abrupt. It's a slow process that takes time. As the cycle continues, the sun's magnetic field goes through a series of transformations. And when it reaches its most twisted and complex state, it reaches a tipping point and begins to reorganize itself. So how do scientists know when the sun is about to flip its magnetic field? So how do scientists know when the sun is about to flip its magnetic field? They monitor the sun's activity with advanced tools and techniques. Observatories, both on Earth and in space, use powerful telescopes 
to capture detailed images of the sun's surface and sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory track changes in the sun's magnetic. One key indicator of an impending reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and with greater intensity. As they move towards the equator, it signals that the magnetic field is becoming unstable and preparing to flip. Let's take a closer look at sunspots. These dark patches appear on the sun's surface when its magnetic field lines twist and tangle due to differential rotation. The sun's equator rotates faster than its poles, stretching and warping the magnetic lines. When these lines loop above the surface, they disrupt the flow of hot plasma from the sun's interior, creating the cooler, darker regions we see as sunspots. These sunspots can sometimes produce powerful solar flares, NCMS, releasing massive amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When these solar events are directed toward Earth, they can disrupt satellite communications, damage power grids, and pose serious risks to astronauts in space. On the flip side, they can also enhance auroras, but they also increase radiation levels in the upper atmosphere, which can be harmful. Now, let's dive into the difference between solar flares and CMS. Both are intense bursts of energy from the sun, but they differ in nature. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. These flares emit a lot of energy, often in the form of X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Think of them as massive explosions on the sun's surface. On the other hand, CMS are huge ejections of solar wind and magnetic fields from the sun's corona. These are like giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields that are propelled into space. When a CME occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at incredibly high speeds. Although solar flares and CMS are related, they aren't the same. A solar flare doesn't always lead to a CME, but sometimes a particularly strong flare can trigger a CME. When it comes to danger, it depends on the type of solar event. Solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation systems, and pose risks to astronauts. However, CMS tend to be more dangerous because they can cause geomagnetic storms, which can severely affect Earth's technology and infrastructure. Additionally, during periods of high solar activity, cosmic radiation levels reaching Earth also rise. Satellites and spacecraft are particularly vulnerable to this increased solar activity as the charged particles can damage electronics, interfere with communications, and even alter satellite orbits. For example, increased solar activity could cause slight warming of the atmosphere, which could exacerbate existing climate change. Although the reversal of the Sun's magnetic field doesn't directly impact Earth's climate, some studies suggest that fluctuations in solar radiation could affect weather patterns and climate. Despite the potential hazards, there's also beauty in increased solar activity. Auroras, the stunning light displays that occur when charged particles from the sun interact with Earth's magnetic field, become more frequent and visible at lower latitudes during periods of heightened solar activity. The increased solar activity during a magnetic reversal raises the risk of geomagnetic storms. These storms occur when solar wind interacts with Earth's magnetic field and can cause widespread blackouts and damage to infrastructure. The most significant example of such an event occurred on September 1, 1859, when the Carrington event, the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded, struck Earth. It was triggered by a massive solar flare and CME and had a profound impact on Earth's telegraph systems, causing fires and malfunctions. However, there's a darker side to this process. If an event like the Carrington event were to happen today, the consequences would be catastrophic. Power grids could collapse, communications could fail, and satellite systems could be severely impacted. The economic and social effects would be immense, as essential services and technology would be disrupted, flights could be grounded, GPS systems would fail, and emergency services would struggle to respond to the crisis. The threat from solar storms is very real, 
On May 10, 2024, a sunspot named AR-3660 for appeared on the sun. It was enormous, about 15 times the width of Earth, and similar in size to the sunspot observed during the Carrington event. Governments and space agencies are actively working to mitigate the impact of such events, but individuals can also take steps to prepare for emergencies. Having emergency supplies and being ready for potential disruptions could make a significant difference in the face of a solar storm. While AR-3660 for produced powerful solar flares and CMS, the solar storms that followed didn't match the severity of the Carrington event. And subscribe for more updates on the amazing happenings in our universe. Thanks for watching. Nevertheless, the possibility of a catastrophic solar event remains. Given the risks, it's essential to be prepared. We've covered a lot of ground today. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to like the video.